There aren't many places more beautiful than Northern California's wine country, and the Dry Creek Valley produces some of the best wines of the region. The good news for wine enthusiasts is that this area of Sonoma County is more laid back than its Napa neighbor, and there is no shortage of small wineries thoughtfully producing sustainable vino. Winemaker Jamie Peterson invites me up to Bradford Mountain to check on the grapes before heading back down to the winery. This is my father's vineyard that he planted when he moved here in 1983 and was the reason for being in the Dry Creek Valley uh, to grow grapes and sell them to other wineries. That was before he started making a little wine on the side in 1987. So this is about 15 acres of vines that accounts for roughly 40% of our production. Oh, wow, and this dirt is red. Yeah, there's a reddish uh, tinge and that's mm -hmm. what gives the wines from this area kind of uniqueness. Kind of got a lot of rock down there, a lot of mm -hmm. clay, iron rich. Um, makes for wines with a little more vibrancy. These are our Zinfandel grapes, uh, the Bradford Mountain Zin, just starting to get a little bit of color. Are there any ready to taste? I'm dying to taste one. Yeah, probably not tasty, but we can <laughs> find some of the more purple. and. Uh, it's see. purple? It's, it's probably the same sugar level as a table grape, but the problem again is the acidity Ooh. is uh, electric, so. I love it. So what's this right here? The uh, trunk of the vine. So the trunk is part of the top part of the vine, and actually, there's a different type of root called the rootstock, and it's grafted together. In the winter, we would take a cutting from the top part of the vine, uh -huh. and you cut a little notch out, mm -hmm. and then you take roots that you've propagated, and you'll stick them together, tape it up, and they'll grow together. It's, oh. it's a pretty amazing process. So um, the roots feed the vine, and then you know the fruiting part here grows off of the canes and the shoots and every year we'll prune that back so in the winter it just looks like a stick in the ground basically. Sustainability to us starts in the growing of the grapes and we don't use harsh chemicals or chemical fertilizers in the vineyard. We'll do cover cropping to replenish the soil. We try and do as much uh, dry farming, non-irrigated farming as possible. We grow 10 different varieties, maybe 11. And so that's a lot of grapes, all from different regions of the world. Mm -hmm. How do they all grow in California, in this very specific spot on this mountain in Dry Creek Valley? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the weather here is perfect. Uh, dry summers, all the grapes uh, can grow with none of the disease pressure. But we, you know, play around with blends and um, we feel that our area can make a whole bunch of different varieties from all over the world uh, that taste delicious. How do you come up with the names? Well, zero manipulation is the name we came up with for the overall philosophy of winemaking, you know, not filtering, not fining, uh, really letting the grapes speak for themselves. This is brand new 2009 vintage. So before I taste it, I can pretend I know what to do, <laughs> but will you teach me? Tasting yeah. technique? Yes, tasting technique. So I always, you know, just look at the color, give it a swirl. The swirling uh, gets a little air into the wine and helps open up the flavors. Okay. You also can play around with the legs if you want and just see as it drips down the side of the glass. Sort of meaningless. Uh, <laughs> wines with sugar or higher alcohol will have more legs. Uh huh. But um, swirling really opens up the aroma. It's important to get that air um, in a freshly opened bottle, particularly. Uh -huh. uh, give it a, a smell. Is there a specific way to smell? I don't really think so. I mean, okay. some people like to stick their whole nose right in the glass. The smell is really where you get most of the flavor. I mean, it's there's not that many flavors, it's aromas. I think I like it out of the glass a little. I'm eating my whole snoot in there. <laughs> um, and then you can uh, take a little sip. Oh, that's delicious. Thanks. Wow. Pay attention to, you know, the different parts of your mouth. You've mm -hmm. got the, the different taste areas, acidity, you know, the, the tannin, the kind of grippiness, the astringency, the sweetness of the fruit. And when I taste, I actually pull a little air in through the wine and that helps How open up. How do you do that? Little. Let me do a little... Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, let me try it. <laughs> Am I, maybe I'm sipping too much. Mm -hmm. I think I need to work on it. All right, all right, no okay. worries. Jamie takes great care in his winemaking, and trust me, it comes through with every sip. It's one thing to drink a great bottle of wine, 
It's another to know that that bottle came from someone who has a deep respect for his craft. We only do about 6,000 cases a year, which could sound like a lot, but that's smaller than a lot of large wineries, smallest tanks. It's me, my father. We uh, are involved in every step of the process, from growing the grapes, making the wine, uh, selling the wine. You know, I'm here on the, the tasting room on the weekends. I think a good winemaker has patience, uh, kind of a patience combined with a decisiveness and ability to make decisions, but also the ability to, to stand back and let nature take its course. We try and let the vineyard come through and every year is different and we celebrate that rather than try and overwhelm it.